Oh, we are. Now you all have to approve it. Right. <laughs> all right. So there was a, a motion made to approve the minutes. So uh, we're remote. So we need to do roll call. Uh, Fred? Yes. Paul? Yes. George Ann? Yes. Becky? Yes. All right. Meeting minutes are approved. All right. That was that was easy. Um, <laughs> Next item is to figure out what we're doing. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we have, obviously, just to recap quickly. Um, well, everybody's one with everybody's run through it, but um, so those the capital projects were approved. Uh, the recommendations of the COFRF were approved by the select board um, to fund those uh, capital projects. And again, that was those were kind of time sensitive with annual town meeting coming up. And needing to find a way to fund those, but it still leaves us with, um, you know, over three hundred thousand dollars is to of of CLFRF money, and um, I think we just got to talk about the the path forward. Um, you know, we have a list of project ideas. Um, we had some draft evaluation criteria that we haven't discussed. Um, but we just really got. I think it's just a good time to reset. Um, Brian, if I, if I can just sort of interject something, effectively, it, at least from what the finance committee has approved and what I, you know, will likely go before town meeting, what we've effectively done by funding these projects is enable the finance committee to approve moving or recommend moving roughly the same amount of money that we approve for those capital projects into stabilization funds. So essentially, it's just about the same amount of money. So essentially what we did by funding those projects is put that money into savings. Oh, that's neat. Yep. Right, you essentially peel the expiration date off. It, right, it, it, <clears throat> we, we took money that has an expiration date and moved it into funds that don't. Yep. <laughs> right. That's what we did. Because it's and, about one hundred forty thousand um, dollars we spent on capital projects, and about one hundred forty that's going to stabilization funds. So, um, Fred, could um, would you mind um, explaining like what that looks like in terms of what that money then means for the town? It it's in, if what it means it's in essentially savings accounts. I mean, not literally, but they're in reserve for whatever ultimately town meeting decide. Essentially, it took that money, assuming that it's approved, well, actually, no, the select board's already approved it, and taken the discretion away from the select board and given it to town meeting. I see. I mean, in very practical terms, that's what it did. Right. Gotcha. And it Brian, did. Paul, you, Thank you. you agree with that assessment? By, yes. by the select board approving that 140,000, it let the budget move 140 into stabilization funds, which can only get spent by town meeting. And, and Fred, um, so one other question about that. Does that, does it mean that we're basically, um, the money was used on things that the town would have wanted to spend money on anyway? It's just that it, um, this way, it allowed it to do it expeditiously and then we could put the money to savings. Is that kind of what you mean? Exactly. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and if I misrepresent anything, Paul, Brian, correct me, but I think that that no, that's, pretty much sums up what, what's that being is, done. That is what occurred, although <laughs> that, that we can't say that was the exact plan from the outset, but at the end of the day, that is exactly right. what happened. Um, right. No, that wasn't the plan, but ultimately, that's the yeah, the effect right. of of what was done. Right. And also, we we didn't burden by doing that by 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 taking these funds and using it for capital projects. We didn't burden the town with future expenses. Um, they're a one one shot deal. You know one. One expenditure, expenditure is paid for, and we move on. 
uh, versus um, spending it on programming type of expenses, which would um, might encumber the town to pay for that in the coming years. So um, that's that. I thought it was a good move. Um, Brian, um, you, you, you sent out a few documents um, in relation to this meeting. Obviously one was the minutes um, and the other one was a list of projects, but I thought you brought to our attention the fact that um, we could do a better job as a committee to look at criteria and, and how we're gonna move forward um, you know, in looking at all of these projects. Um, so I want to throw that back at you to see if you could come around with that. Yeah. Um, who's 350 VT community? That, that's me. That's you? Long okay. story. Yeah, sorry about that. I <laughs> still have to change that. Yeah, yeah. All right. I just want to make sure. <clears throat> yeah. I Numbers know, right. and letters. Just look a little Some, suspicious. Someone's bombing us, right? Exactly. Yeah, I know. Um. All right. Now I'm, All right. Now I'm human again. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, we're essentially at a point where, where we have a project list. Um, I don't know if it's complete or not, but we have a list of projects and we have money. Um, and we know that the select board is looking for recommendations as to the best way to, to spend those dollars. Um, so I, I think the question is, you know, what's the process that we want to use to, to make those recommendations? Um, so I guess would, that's, would, yeah. Would, would you mind um, reading over the criteria that you, I, I, I like the idea of us talking directly about the, that document. Cause I think it's really, it's a great, maybe there are things we want to add, but I think it'd be nice to, for us to all look at it together. And I know, I think we did already, but it would be nice to look at it again. Um, cause I, I find it very grounding <laughs> to, to, um, to look at it and, and, uh, just sort of have something to launch from. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. Thanks. Yep. Um, and this was just, this was just from other, you know, I looked at some of the grant programs that the state has and I just kind of, um, took what they, you know, what they look at. Um, and some of the criteria. Um, so, I mean, one thing to look at is project need. Uh, oh, let's just talk about the categories. One is, is project need. So that's obviously how much the project's needed or whether it's not needed. Um, impact sort of looks at uh, the number of people or, or um, the type of people that it benefits. Um, timeliness is important, obviously, because they need to, the funds need to be spent within a, a certain time period. Um, Sustainability and resiliency is something that some grant programs look at. Um, so it's looking about whether the project is sustainable beyond, you know, the CLFRF monies. Um, so that might get into part of what Paul's talking about in terms of whether it's whether it's going to add a add a burden to the town budget or whether it's sustainable on its own. Um, um, talk about resiliency for uh, against future pandemics. Um, leveraging funds in future investment. Some grant programs will look to see, um, you know, what additional funds will be leveraged. Um, others look at whether it will uh, sort of enable or, or catalyze future investment in the town or community. Um, experience and ability, obviously the person who's proposing the project, we wanna make sure that they can do what they say they're gonna do within the time that they have to do it. Um, so those were ones that I was able to gather from various sources. I um, one thing that we've that has come up a few times when we've talked is <clears throat> the issue of whether it's a project that wouldn't get done if it weren't for this funding. 
Um, and I'm not sure where that would fit in here, but um, that seems like a um, it, it, like both sides of that. Both if we if we did fund it, would um, or if if we didn't fund it, would it happen anyway? Does it, has the town already carved out money for it? I mean, I guess that in some ways that's an obvious thing, but but we had talked about it before. <clears throat> Yeah, well, I don't think it's obvious. I think it's the best of spending money on things that we wouldn't have gotten otherwise. Right. That this this is money we wouldn't have gotten otherwise, and should we spend this on things that might not? Do have we want to spend it all? Do we want to spend all this money now or save some of it? I I, I have thoughts about it, and, and again, we've kind of talked about this before, that there's, there is a power to having a large sum of money for something that you would otherwise never do, but is a really great project. So um, it's kind of nice to sit for a while as we're looking through the different proposals, recognizing that while it's great to fund a lot of little ones, and I mean, what better outcome than to fund a lot of little projects like we've we've just done, and find out that that allows us to have savings? I mean, that's pretty cool. I don't know that that's always going to happen, <laughs> but um, but that is really nice to be able to do lots of little things. But it's also if if we can do one or you know if one of the things we did was a, a larger thing that we otherwise would never be able to do. I I really like that if we if we find something that that fits. So I think like not rushing to spend more while we really think about what our options are, I think is a, a wise thing, especially because we have, what is it, Brian, a year and a half? I think it's to end of 24. Okay. So yeah. 24, I think. Yeah, a couple of years. I, I, I like the idea of being, a, being able to use this money to leverage even bigger projects also. Right. Exactly right, yep. Um, you know, that if we need, you know, hundred thousand dollars to leverage for a much bigger project. This is a nice place to do that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, just um, you know, as a thought, as as we're kicking this around, this is these are relief funds, and essentially they're funds that we should try to spend that will. Um, that will relieve the burden of, on as many taxpayers uh, with, within town as possible, at, at least from my view, viewpoint. Um, I mean, we could, we could, I mean, the federal government could have just kicked everybody, could have just written a check for ev everybody in town, or, and we could have done the same thing. But um, obviously, we're not going down that road. But as we as we look at where to spend and how to spend, I think one of the points on here is is that that it should impact as many residents in town as possible. Um, well, Paul, we, in effect, we at least did a little bit of that because we were able to. I agree. Put put more money into uh, offsetting the tax increase. Exactly this year than we normally did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that was, that was, at least in my mind, within the framework of sort of, you know, what we've spoken about. Um, um, yeah, that's the same thing, because we put that money into those, those capital projects that yeah. otherwise would have been a, yeah. a draw on those monies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fred, that's We're kind of bad. So, I mean, this, I'm, I'm, it's like the gift that keeps on giving. I'm really impressed. <laughs> Reduce tax rate, have bigger savings and paid for project. I mean, that's, that's impressive. I'm yep. like it. And we could do Back it again. on that um, list of, I don't know which part of the email it was sent from, but there was a list on there from the elementary school, the water department, the highway department, can we go through that and like eliminate some right off there to kind of shrink the size down a little bit or be get a better idea of where we want to, you know, go in what direction we want to go in? Well, I, I think one of the things we had talked about before, um, I see Brian's going to have a helper, <laughs> um, 
is is the idea. So we have that list and it's great to sort of have that as sort of a place to launch from. But we had talked about the idea that um, that what we would have people sending their proposals do is um, fulfill some level of sort of, I don't know, maybe in a way it's a little um, show of commitment and show of ability. Like I think it was I can't remember which of you, one of you guys said very brilliantly that we want to make sure that the people who are making the proposals have the, or that there is someone that has the capacity to have it actually happen. I, I think it was Brian that said it. And um, so it's, it's one thing to like, it, it's like the elementary school list has some specific numbers. Um, and may, I don't want to burden anyone too much, but it is kind of nice if there are like we're going to buy it from this place, or um, you know, there's a there's a source for that number, um, rather than just kind of pulling it out of the air and you know a, a way that they're going to get it and so on. Um, so we talked about having people actually submitting um, requests that have that kind of um, backup um, information. And I'm not sure if everybody still agrees that we should do that, but I like that idea because it kind of does some of the work for us um, from the people who are interested in having these things happen. Yep, I agree. Yeah. Um, so here we have the project ideas in front of us. Um, so let's. Okay. Yeah, we can take out the ones we've already done. Yeah, but it, that's that's a really good point. <laughs> and um, um, yeah, that'd be great. Um, I think the, the air handling is just got to get further study, Brian. I think that's where we left it. That yeah, that's still on, right? Let's that, send it to committee. On, but we have to figure <laughs> out. We, have, we need to get a whether an expert or someone in to see what the best way to do that is rather than just throw money at splitters yeah. and say that that's yeah. the only way to do it yeah can i just can before we keep going down this list are we in agreement that we should look to spend these monies on projects that are one and done that are capital like projects like we just spent money on versus if you look at the school, reimburse school lunches, creates, Brian, you're going away on me. Okay. Um, Is this how? Yeah, well, that's great. That's, that's nice. Um, so if you look at the rest of the school, create summer program, higher mass specialist, reimburse, all of those would require, if it was to keep going, would require the town to um, to pick up those the cost of those programs once the money was exhausted, yeah. and I yeah. and so yeah, yeah I think I, we're I, agreed I, that we 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 don't want to set up things that need to be endowed otherwise. Right. Yeah. Uh, oh, go ahead, Jerry Jan. Sorry. Last four on that list. Basically, you want to eliminate. Yeah. yeah I, what I was going to say is sort of back to the point about leveraging money. And I feel like whoever's proposing it would need to come with this information. But if there's like, for instance, say they wanted to set up a tutoring program and they needed matching money to start it, that then they would fund. That's, that'd be one thing. Whereas um, if it, so in other words, it was, you know, it's sort of launching money that then would, be paired with funding that was more ongoing. And I don't know if that even exists, but I'm that would be up to them to bring it to us. Right. Does that make sense? Well, right. I think, for, yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't think we want to put money into, you know, proactively setting up, you know, tutoring programs or school lunches right. with no idea of how they're going to be paid for down the line. Exactly. Yep. I agree. Yep. Um. Yep. We, we don't um, want to set up a program that has to be canceled after two years. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. 
And so then I, I do want to just also throw out there that this is this is what we've gotten so far, but th there is still that um, I think very important part, which is to be reaching out to the other committees and make sure that it's clear what this project is and um, that we that we're looking for um, proposals. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, I want to make sure that it's really representative of the um, of what town has to offer. Okay, so here's the criteria. Yeah, so I think that those last four on that school list can be crossed out. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Or erased or whatever. Better documentation this way. Yeah. So all that's left on that list then is air conditioning or air filtration. Right. Yeah, both, both are air handling issues that we've got to get further information on. Right, so that's all that's left on that list. Yeah. Okay. Right. And, and Brian, who's the study committee? Uh, that's just a joke. Oh. <laughs> That's where legislation goes to die, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. I thank you for explaining the joke to me. <laughs> More study. <laughs> uh, do we want to keep going down the list or? Yeah, might as well. well. Well, yeah, um, when it comes to the water department, okay, um, I think, you know, all of those costs are real, except we don't know what the cost is. So no, we can't, we well, mean, no, we don't, because if it's not here, it doesn't exist. It, the costs we were given speak. to the selectmen. The generator, well, the propane tank, and the pump house, we already got bids on them. The costs were sent to the selectmen. Right, and we don't, we don't need to decide specifically tonight. I mean, I, they do have, there are quotes for those. Okay. But, but we don't need to decide tonight. But, but the, from the, the question at, at the select board, there was a disagreement over spending this money on water department because of the, and, and sort of disagreement over the nature of what benefits the whole town? Right. Well, let me there, ask. There you was this some. Thing. There was some argument that benefiting the water department helps the whole town grow and property values, but not everyone is on town water. Right. Okay. And so what is that? And there's just a disagreement on what constitutes benefiting the whole town. Well. What justifies any project that we did? I can't come up with anything in my mind that where we can satisfy 75% of the people in town. And the generator, like I said before, with the school, the way it's set up over there is emergency building. Without that generator, you have nothing. All the businesses in town have to close because there'll be no water in town. So if you can give me one project that we've already voted on that even touches 75% of the people, I'll agree with you. But it, this is all town projects. I don't care who's paying for it, the water department or the taxes. We're still talking the same thing as, as far as I'm concerned. It's town money. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I agree with you. It it is town money, and it and it, and it is seventy five percent of the the residents in town that that are um, that will be impacted by this. But to be quite honest, from my perspective, if I'm going to put my time into this meeting, into this committee, I am not going to look at anything that doesn't have a price tag after it. And if it doesn't have a price tag, then we move, then we move ahead. And, and next meeting, we have price tags on each of these, and we can have a more, you know, cogent discussion here. But right now, it's, it's, 
it's pretty much a meaningless thing. Well, I, I have a thought because I agree with you and, I, and it'd be, you know, it's not a long list, but it's not a short list either. And it'd be kind of nice to kind of go through them getting a sense because a lot of this too is weighing one project for another, right? Um, right. Which one do you think is more worthy or whatever? Um, and so we can at least look through and say, oh, that definitely doesn't fit or, oh, that's interesting. And then we can get back to each of the, um, the committees and let them know that we want more. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. Okay, yeah. cool. Sure. Um, and Brian, do you, do you mind keeping notes of what we decide to keep on? Um, doing? Yeah. I mean, you've been making, yeah. taking notes of everything else, so I'm sure you're going to do that no matter what. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Now, so, George, Ann, I'm not throwing the baby out with the bath water here. All I'm saying is that for, for us, for our time that we invest in, in this, that we need to have very specific dollars and um and outcomes so i will um, email you all of you guys this week the actual prices but understand that that fluctuates now the way economy is so five percent ten percent whatever mm -hmm. so in the longer you wait the worse it is yeah um, all right so should you does that sound good to like kind of go through them like line by line uh, that doesn't fit. Sure, we'll, we'll um, communicate back. Does that sound good? Yeah, this, this is and knowing that it's just a very rough cut. Exactly, yep, exactly right. You know, so saying, yep. saying we're gonna talk about something doesn't mean with it, we're going to recommend it. Exactly. Okay, so everything there under the water department, you might as well pass over it now. Yep. And go to the highway department. Right, yep. good. And, and then another thing is, is that anyone here that has thoughts about whether these things would be paid for anyway. Like I, I mean, I, I would think that highway culvert replacement would already be paid for, but maybe not, so. No, um, Brian, what about, um, or Fred, you may know this, is there any possibility that state money coming in for this project or federal money that went to the state? There, there's always a possibility. Yeah, but you, you also never know what, you know, what new projects, you know, next year's state budget, for all we know, there could be a huge small bridge fund. Yeah, right, right, right. So, uh, yeah. So one of the challenges we have with, with infrastructure are most of the sources of, of construction funding or, or funding that we get don't pay for design. Oh, um, so it 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 puts larger municipalities and cities in it at an advantage who have on staff town and city engineers um i mean in terms of uh, in terms of cost for these things i mean th the Williamsburg road culvert replacement that's for a culvert um it's a remaining culvert on Williamsburg road heading up towards Williamsburg over the two new bridges there um that's a fairly simple culvert replacement and it costs almost $100,000. Christian Lane Bridge, obviously everybody knows it's one lane. I mean, that's gonna be millions of dollars to construct. Um, we Even the Christian Lane culvert that we have listed here, uh, we have a grant, as I just said, we don't have, they don't get grants to, for design. We have a grant to design it. Um, but I mean, that's even projected at 1.5 to $2 million to replace that it, it's just crazy so yeah three hundred thousand dollars is a lot of money but in terms of infrastructure in the world of infrastructure cost of infrastructure it's not it's not that much mm -hmm. um right so it, it's so, going to be hard to touch these going to be hard to touch these. Fact, these engineering studies are getting to the point where they're costing more than let's say the culvert itself that way. It's typically around 10 to 12 percent of, of maybe it's even awful. 12 to 15 yeah. percent. Yeah, I they're, think that, they're a challenge. Yeah, I, I think that our, our best approach would be just to sort of leave it open. If something comes along that requires the leveraging of, you know, a yep. quick or as quick as possible yeah. funding of plans in order to leverage, you know, to get access to some much larger sum of money, mm -hmm. that would be a good use for this, you know, very 
quick, quickly accessed source of funds, but I wouldn't set anything aside for that not knowing what's going to be needed. And Fred, how much is in the savings now because of the initial money we put in? Uh, They're all. We got four the, different savings accounts. There, there are four different funds, and I think they're totaling around a million dollars now. But I mean, the, the stuff that we, the the stuff that allowed to be saved from what we already gave um, for the projects we just discussed last that time. was about the same amount as we funded, which is about $140,000. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. So, because I, I feel like in some ways, wouldn't that fit what we're describing too, is to, at least there's that that we can um, say, hey, that's Yeah, but the, the, the only issue with that is that's much more difficult or just clumsy to access. I see. Okay. That I go, going to town meeting and getting a two thirds vote gotcha. to withdraw money from those funds. Gotcha, okay. As Thanks. opposed to select board just saying, spend the money. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So although, in other words, oh, go ahead, sorry, Paul. No, I say, although going to town floor has never really been a problem in the past when everything is transparent and people know that it's for the betterment of the town, so. No, no, it's not, Paul, I'm, it's, I'm not saying, even saying it's a problem. It's just a much clumsier process that well, can it drag is. out over a couple of two, three sure. months. Right, so right. Special town the, meeting. The benefit as opposed of to this quick. You know, if something came up that needed to be done within a week, yes, yeah, right. Could spend this money within a week. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So I would propose then that we um, communicate with the highway department that we would consider all three of those um, over the next couple of years, or you know, th those all seemed like reasonable things for us to consider. Um, directing money at. It would be good to have some more detail. And I, I believe the Christian Lane culvert, if I think we talked about this last time, is very complicated. Am I right about that? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's one that, so just where that project is, we have we have a grant to pay for 100% design of that replacement of that culvert. It's going to be, it's essentially going to be a bridge now, a small bridge. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, so design is, 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 is paid for. Um, construction costs are gonna be, you know, somewhere in the range of one to $2 million. So I don't think these funds are really gonna touch that. No. Yeah. Um, right. So. So I, I think for our purpose, I think Fred was right. If we wanna earmark some money to put aside for that point in time when the select board has to access money quickly to pay for some type of a I don't know, study on one of these projects, okay, it's there for a little while, but generally speaking, I think this is above and beyond the scope of what this committee can commit to um, in any way, shape, or form. I, I agree, and Brian, uh, correct me if you think I'm wrong on this. This is the kind of money we could have used to leverage uh, that we use free cash to leverage for the Hurley Park grant. That if if we needed, if the town needed money in place to show some money in place quickly, yep. this is the kind of money yep. that could be used for that. Right. Which mm -hmm. in the case of the Hurley Park money uh, is coming back. It was yep. just needed to, sh you know, essentially good faith money. Right, right. To right. show that it was there. Yeah. And there's, there's no reason to think that next year, when the budget comes around again, there will be capital expenditures that these monies could meet. And again, we would be able to salt away monies again into various stabilization accounts for future vehicles, future building repairs, future you know, whatever. Um, so it could be done again. Um, and we could take some of it and put it aside, as Fred said, just in case. But, you know, we have to have this, all, we, we have to have these monies spent, um, you know, in about a year and a half from now. Um, yeah, so I, don't, I don't think we want to do, do all of that now when we haven't. 
just because we may have something coming along that would that these monies would be great to use for. Yeah. But you know, if, if we did the same thing next year of paying for capital projects and using the money that would have gone to them to go into stabilization. I mean, this year we're putting, Paul, correct, I think it's 75,000 into the building stabilization fund, which ultimately will yeah. go to either mm -hmm. a major repair at the school, like if a boiler blew or something that needed a six figure repair or into plans and initial construction on a new highway garage. Those highway are the two right. things that are the major anticipated spending of a mm -hmm. of the building stabilization fund. And yep. we're so recommending putting seventy the... seventy five thousand dollars into those. So that's mm -hmm. essentially this money going to those places. So going back to the list, should we just keep the Williamsburg Road culvert replacement and then get rid of the Christian Lane ones for highway department? Um, as talking yeah, about it yeah. kind of, as we're describing uh, it. I would agree good. with that. Okay. Yeah. I think in practical terms, yeah, the, the cost for those other two are, I mean, the engineering on the Christian Lane Bridge is probably gonna be I don't know if it's 10% of a $4 million bridge, that's more money than we have. Right. Um, but right. it, it, it's gonna be a cost within the next 10 years that the town will likely have to absorb unless we can find you know, state funding. But also I think one, one thing to consider in terms of infrastructure is that there's going to be infrastructure money, other infrastructure monies available related to the, you know, sure. related to the, the pandemic relief, yep. but, you know, funds. So. There may be alternative sources of of monies for these projects. And then the question is, um, is it just we let those things happen, or is there any way that we can use this money to leverage those? So those that it's, it seems like that's kind of the question when it comes up to that. But um, just to go through the list, um, so we keep Williamsburg and then get rid of the other two, or you know, Brian, okay. how bad is yeah. that culvert on the Williamsburg Road? Well, I think it's, um, well, there are actually, um, if it's the one I'm thinking about, um, yeah, it needs to be replaced. Um, yeah, it's in pretty rough shape. You know, it's in tough shape. I mean, the bridges have been, you know, two of them have been done over the past. Right, yeah, years. I've seen that. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, but how much traffic do we actually have on there? Yeah, that, that was my question is how much general utility for the town? Yes, it's in, they're in the town and yes, they yeah. need to be done, but <laughs> they don't um, get an awful lot of use. Yeah, that right. one especially. Right, they don't. The only issue with those culverts is that you have to get a fire truck up, up there. And at, you may have to get a fire truck up, up there. Um, so I know that is certainly um, an issue. Now, um, it, but this, it again, gets into the same issue of serving the whole town. And yeah, right. You know, there right. are gonna be a lot of people on River Road who don't even know where those bridges are. Well, that's true. And, um, but, you know, by the same token, I mean, you can say that, you know, just about on any street in town, it's, this, I think this came from Keith, right? Do we want, is this on the list yet? Yeah, it's on the top of it. The, oh, 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 okay, yeah, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, so I mean, I, I feel like we can just leave it on there knowing that this, we may decide we don't need it, but just rather than, it's not a line through it, it's something to think about further. <laughs> There's no <laughs> houses up there. Right. We Right. No, so, I don't think we need to talk any further in depth about it now, but just exactly. I mean, I, that, we're not going to make the decision now about whether to do right, it or not. Whereas right, the Christian right. Lane one, it sounds like re that's really not in our purview. So and um, so and I'd, I'd love to get through this list because, you know, it's a start for what we're talking about. Yep. And we have have a general sense of communicating back and I can speak to the Board of Health stuff so very easily there. There are the long term things like the um, storing the digitized um 
uh, files that would have a annual cost. So we should nix that and the um, paying for a community health worker because that's ongoing also. Right. Um, and I can get um, funding for um, the web server because um, <clears throat> um, that could be very valuable. And that would be something that would help everybody. Um, and, and then, you know, <laughs> asking for a few thousand dollars for um, chairs. We can share with other people. Anyway, I can get some more, more details on those sorts of things. I do wanna mention, talk a little bit about the last thing on, on the line. I'd mentioned this a little bit before. Um, obviously that's a very vague proposal. And mm -hmm. if I were really going to, I'm, I'm a huge enthusiast for this. I think it would make the town just, I think it would be just such a wonderful attribute for the town. And I especially like the idea of walk bike infrastructure that um, works with other towns too. I don't, have you guys heard about the, um, the, the uh, path that they're working on in, um, I guess it's in Hatfield along the river? No. Yeah, it's a, it's a, 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 a recreational path. I'm not sure how far it's going, but it connects up with what's in Northampton. And I mean, imagine a recreational path that like, I mean, fantasy here, but that went all along the river, like all the way up to Deerfield or beyond that. I mean, it would be incredible. It'd be just such an amazing asset to the area. So that kind of thing where you have funds that you can bring it and, um, and start making those connections is really neat. But I would not, I mean, I'm, I, I'm glad that this is here so that I can just say that I'm a big fan of this. Um, but I would, if, if it was a real proposal, I would come back with real details. So I'm just throwing it out there as something that can be really fabulous, but. I'll that would be, that would be um, a necessary step in moving yeah. forward with that. Because uh, as you said, it is quite vague. Yeah. You'd, you'd, you'd have to have a lot of specifics have to have specific costs yes. and you would have to do it. Yeah. Um, that's not something that we're gonna get involved with. So, so if you're the champion for that project then, and just like George Ann's a champion for the, um, um, the, wa the water department costs, um, we'll get specific costs there. And if you can get specific costs for the walk bike infrastructure, um, then, is something we can have a discussion on, um, but um, no, completely agree, um, Brian. I'm not sure if you got my email about the um, the um, energy resiliency um, work because um, um, I'd love to bring it up and just I could just bring it up briefly here if it's appropriate, or I can always talk to you later about it um, before I, we talk about it here. Um, I think. I, th I think it's fine to talk about it now. I also want to put you in touch with someone from the COG about the, about the, the bike, the walk bike stuff. I know, that, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot, you know, being talked about in different communities. So that would be wonderful, Brian, thank you. Um, Brian, is, is that the kind of project that might go into like the next Complete Streets uh, proposal? Um, possibly, it, it's even, I think it's even more, more i think it's even a better fit for some of the the federal highway transportation funding okay that comes through the cog that you know they have 10 million dollars that they allocate between different modes of transportation and and things like that so uh, but yeah that, I, i'd really appreciate brian thank you <clears throat> so just really briefly um hannah davis i don't know if any of you have well fred you probably have well you probably all have talked to her but or them um but they're working on this proposal, <clears throat> a grant proposal for, um, uh, it's basically energy resiliency, including um, solar panels and um, solar and energy storage, electric storage um, <clears throat> for, I, I believe it's both the town hall and um, the school. Um, and <clears throat> I mean, it's a, it's a really exciting project. It's really impressive. And they have all of the documentation. I, I can't claim to have any of it. I'm looking through it now, but um, they've just done incredible amounts of work. Um, and there's a May 4th deadline um, and it requires a 10% um, um, funding matching from the town. And it's a, like a up to $3 million project. Um, and 
does that mean a three hundred thousand dollars match or a thirty? I I, I meant that, to that'd be a three hundred thousand match. I thought so. I I think I was wishful thinking there was less than that, but anyway, so it'd be a lot. But but it's a really amazing project, and I'm not sure if the May fifth deadline requires that the town already have that money ready. Is that brought <clears throat> true, Brian? Or um, you, you do not. I mean, we have to sign a letter. I should say, not we the. Right. The select board charity just signed a letter saying that if the grant is awarded, that the town would commit the funds. Okay, great. So, I mean, there's a little bit of wiggle room there, I guess, for thinking. But what's one of the great things about the project um, is that it, over, I think, 15 years, it saves the town $875,000. So that is an example of win, win, win. And um, it also creates resiliency for the town. It would allow you know, during times of um, weather problems, for instance, you know, uh, extreme heat, they can create a cooling center out of the town hall. So there's a, just a lot of ways that it could really benefit the town. And, you know, I'm happy to give more information, but I wanted to bring it up because in my mind, that is a great example of where at least some of this money could just be an incredible asset for the town and give back to the whole, whole town because it, you know, reduce taxes, create safe haven for people, um, save the town money. And I even like the idea of that money saved gets channeled into things like say, um, funds for people to be able to weatherize their homes or something like that, where it's, you know, just provides even more resources for the town. So anyway, I wanted to let you know about it and I can, I, I'm happy to share the, the incredible amounts of documentation that Hannah has produced, but um, I just wanted to mention it. Pretty neat. I have a question for uh, Paul and uh, Brian. Refresh my mind a little bit. Wasn't there when we <clears throat> did the new town offices over money put aside for the little office spaces that were in there? Yeah, and there's so, what happened to it? That that money's still there. Um, still there? Yep. Okay. Yeah, they're going to cordon off. They're going to make small office spaces in the front for various yeah, yeah. departments in town. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know where that project is, but um, if it, Brian says the money's there, then the money's there. The money's still there. It's it, it's on our it's on the it's on the lower part of our to do list, and it, it over the years has kept getting pushed down a little bit. Um, part of it is because there hasn't been a a, a huge perceived need for it. Um, especially with COVID when nobody was in the offices. So um, it's on the to-do list, um, but we just got to make sure it gets up higher. Okay. Well, that would, you know, I think to George Ann's point, this Board of Health, the first item. This That's what brought my attention. Of, it falls, it certainly falls into that bucket. I would agree, yeah. 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 Um, so you're saying that there's funds that, could be directed toward that. Yeah. What is yeah. that called? What is that money called? So I can uh, let Fran know. Um, it's it's just in a separate account. I don't remember the exact name of it. Town it's hall on, money. It, it's on the special revenue report that the account uh, issues. It, it, yeah, there's a four-page list of accounts that the town has, and it's one of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And just um, as just as we're speaking about making clear the costs of these um, estimated cost is, to my mind, is not something we can make a decision on. Someone's having an estimated cost. In my opinion, they haven't done their homework. They haven't done the research. And they're sort of just winging it. I completely um, agree, Paul, just so you and, know. And yeah. so I'm not going to. So for me, that's a skip, um, you know, un, 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 until it's very, very specific. And then we can make a decision on it. Well, uh, you know, just to point out, all of the things that are on these lists so far are in the same boat. We all have estimated costs here. And it's, it's great. Yep. It, it's important that we have something that we can look at to decide. I think it's even more important that like, I mean, I don't, unless you guys are sure that those, that 
th those tables and chairs, et cetera, can be funded by that other thing, and in which case that's fine. But if you're not, then I would say that more specifics um, are appropriate. If you're saying yeah. absolutely yes, 100%, then that's fine. But well, I think that certainly would, now that we're having a, con a conversation, it, 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 it should make those should make those monies bubble up a little bit in terms of what the selectmen discuss. I, I Brian, think. do you have an idea? I've got the funds report. Do you have any idea roughly where it would be? You, you know, I was thinking for it's probably actually on the operating budget sheet. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, okay. It's probably under public, it's under 194 as public buildings, I think. Um, but uh, that money, it, it, it was definitely set aside for that. Tent folding chairs and table for Board of Health clinics, I don't think falls under the, the purposes of, of that warrant article. But I think the, you know, we talked about the putting up some temporary or permanent walls in that in the, in the remaining backspace there. Yeah. Um, I mean, so so part of part of those funds were were to about half of it's been done, I would say. You know, we've we've separated off the treasurer collector town clerk office from the, the big space back there. Um and then we separated the other backspace off from the warehouse space. Um and we put in the safe there. Uh, yeah the, the vault I should say. Um, and there's been some other, you know, some office furniture that's been purchased over the years for the other spaces. Yeah. Um, but the next part is, is to really separate out, I think, three of those spaces and create those offices. Brian, who's, who, who is on the other side of the meeting room, the large meeting room as, as you're going north out of the building? Water department, assessors, and cemetery. Okay. So and Board of Health. And Board of Health, yeah. And Board and Board of Health. So, okay. Yep. All right. Yeah, All right. People share in that room. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um, right. So, anyway, um, I think we can keep going, yeah? Um, and we had we had talked about the hazard pay issue a little dicey because um, all the teachers um, were exposed. I would say even more than than um, the than the transfer. Yeah, station. it would eliminate that one. Yeah, it's. Um, I mean, I think it's a very nice gesture. I I don't know. I mean, what do other people think about that? But I, well, I, I think it, it. There get to be political questions about. Yeah. where you draw lines right right and i think it's um you know in my heart i think it's the right thing to do but you know on the other side of it there were as you said the entire all but one teacher came back during the covid thing so you know, I mean, <laughs> that was a, you know, that was a pretty special move by a lot of people. So, um, yeah, um, it, in 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 terms of teachers, I mean, I think there's going to be issues if we just say, hey, here's another two hundred fifty dollar check, and it doesn't go through collective bargaining. I think that's going to be a, yeah, yeah. I think that's going to be an issue. Yeah, those are those are issues for other groups. I think to deal yeah. with. Um, and I I have not heard of a request from from the schools for for that, no. Um, no. but I also just received their new contracts and I don't I have not looked at them yet. No, but I can tell you that in years past um, there have been issues from town employees when school employees were uh, received extra monies. And um, so there's nothing to say it wouldn't come back the other way. Um, or if we gave, can, can you give it to just a, a few town employees and not all the town employees? I, you know, so I don't think we should be getting into that. Agreed. I think, I think this is for other people to deal with. Yeah. Everybody um, worked and everybody got paid. And if you leave it there, I think 
we're all covered. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It, it's it's a can of worms, I think, and it's challenging. I mean, we have people working still who are who face you know who are exposed because this thing has dragged on for right. Right. two plus years now and it's <laughs> it's tough yes. yeah. um but um what do you guys think about the i think it's reasonable to consider the trash compactor as a possible thing to fund because that seems like it would benefit the town and it's a you know it's a big chunk well, of money. if we're renting for 250 a month Based on those estimated costs, you're looking at six years of rental to purchase. I my only question is, what's the life of these things? Yeah, I don't know. Who's going to repair it? Yeah. Okay, so those would be these would be things to send back to them. Those questions, yeah. Right. Okay. What, but I think what, it's a reasonable thing to include on the list with that caveat of include of communicating. Yeah useful life and also um, what are the general yearly maintenance and repair? Sure, those are smart. Not only that, but then if you can get parts for it the way things are going. Right, right. And then in terms of repair and paint swap shed, um, I don't have much problem with funding that, but no. so I think that'd be reasonable. I think that's yeah, I'd be in favor of that. That's yeah. fine. So for police department, I say no to the full-time police officer position. Right. Um, and then the police cruiser is an interesting one because um, another thing that Hannah is working on and we discussed is funding an electric police cruiser because yep. it's lower maintenance. I mean, you guys you don't need, probably don't need to be convinced of this. I think it's such a fantastic idea. Um, well, I don't think the, I, the, I, the chief has been looking into we the select board asked the chief to look into it. Good. Right. And yeah. it, it he has written back a letter. It sounds like the kind of the equipment they need in a cruiser isn't quite yet available in an electric cruiser. Gotcha. It may be yeah. in a year or two. We so don't that, know. That might be something to yeah, because it mm -hmm. it it has the potential to be really beneficial to the town because yeah, of other the, other towns and places have done it yeah have, you know have electric vehicles but as secondary units at this uh, point not as yeah. the primary yeah. unit that we would be looking the, at um, um just you know in regards to the police cruiser you know stabilization funds one of the stabilization funds that we have is a vehicle stabilization fund so there are monies that are earmarked to pay for police cruisers. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think that's kind of sure. off the board. Um, and full police officer position, I think that's something we, that's gonna be an ongoing cost. So right. that's not something that I, th I think we would, uh, you know, agree to fund um, like with a bonus pay. Yeah, no, I, I yeah, I think basically that here, right? any of that. Yeah. yeah, I think that's yeah. good. Um, and then for a recreation commission, um, it's a non-starter for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I, what are you gonna eat? like? That's just telling to give us twenty five hundred dollars. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Good. Um, are there other things on the list? That's all from this list. Okay, yeah. great. All right. Um, could I could I add something to the list just to um, just to think about? And it's in the research process. Okay, and that is essentially for the Waitley Elementary School a climbing wall. Now, what's the benefit of a climbing wall? The benefit is that it's another activity for children and the community during, well, especially during the winter, winter months. Um, we have um, a phys ed teacher who's very enthused about it. 
We also have in Whaley Elementary School, we have a librarian who happens to be an amateur rock climber and is very accomplished. And um, it could really be a, a, a big win, not only from a physical activity standpoint, but also a curriculum standpoint. Um, there's a lot of things that the teachers, programs the teachers could build around it. So um, he gave me a figure of between five and $10,000. Of course, I shot back to him that we would need to have very specific um, amounts in order to move forward. I've also spoken with the principal. Um, she is lukewarm on it, um, principally, I believe, because she has doesn't get a feel for it yet. But she has two staff members who are very much in favor of it. Um, so that's um, a question mark. And uh, maybe I think we need the school committee to come to us with that as a and the proposal. school committee and the in the school committee in all like likelihood will. Um, I, I think it's an adorable idea. Um, it's I immediately think of um, liability, of course, <laughs> but um, yeah, me too. <laughs> but, but I being a, a huge fan of climbing walls, I think it's a great idea if it if it could work out. So yeah, I think having them come with all of the details, but mm -hmm. I say, encourage them to do so. We are, Waitley is the only el elementary school in the union without a climbing wall. Well, that can't, just can't remain that way then. That's so, terrible. That's, that's the way it is. And uh, so anyway, so that's that. So I'll just leave that as Yeah, is. I would say encourage them to um, come to us with more details. I think that sounds great. Um, Anything so, else, Brian? That's all that's that's on here. Um, so, sorry. sorry. What was mentioned before? Somebody mentioned about highway garage design at some point earlier in the conversation. Yeah. Yeah, I think I did. Um, Should I add that? Yeah, I think. So. Well. Yeah, and get details up from them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's okay. gonna, there's going to be another group that's going to have to be set up to study the whole highway department garage issue. Yep. Love committees. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so the oh, other, no. another, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Fred. No, no, go, go. Um, we also want, to, we were, have talked a little bit, but it would be great to look at whatever list we've already written and work on um, other people we wanna make sure know about this effort and um, if they have any thoughts or requests, yeah. yeah. Um, do we- I think we, we can to... certainly try to say something at town meeting. Oh yeah, that's a great idea, Fred. Yep. Yeah, that's a really good point. So um, who's going to do the presentation? Mm -hmm. I think that in addition to what we're doing here, um, we need to have some sort of a uh, an accounting uh, spreadsheet here as to how much money we started with, what has been spent, what is projected to be spent, and what we have um, remaining uh, that has to be spent over the next so many months. Um, to make it more complicated, it would be really neat if that could also reflect the money that's now in savings. I would just, it would be neat to, to see how we're, you know, how well, the time No, I don't think we can. For that, that's just, that's an indirect benefit. It's Damn not. it. That's indirect. <laughs> All right, so we'll just have to remember it in our hearts. Um, right. Brian, would you be able to do that in a Google Doc so that it's an active um, living document kind of? Yeah, yeah, I was actually, actually, Paul, when you stopped by today, that's what I was talking to the accountant about. Oh, okay. It's about is about getting uh, mm -hmm. um, getting some of the the projects that were that we've already approved into um, into a budget sheet, and then give us um, the she gives us updates every two weeks. Okay. You know, to, to set that up. Yeah. So yeah, that's mm -hmm. in the works. Yeah. And Brian, have you already started a list of folks that we've thought of? Folks or that we that we haven't thought of. Well, I guess that we don't have 
Right. So, so we'll from. start that now. Um, do we do we want to um, uh, meet till seven thirty? Is that an agreement, or is that, or do we want to end early? I'm fully in favor of that. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm fine with ending whenever because I've got another meeting to go to. Of course yeah. you, can, Fred. <laughs> Um, well, maybe just a quick brainstorm then, maybe like for okay. just, I don't know, five or 10 minutes. Um, um, I, uh, so I, I was wondering, Brian, if you've heard from the Conservation Commission yet about anything, because I would love to hear from them if they have any ideas. Um, and um, the Historical Commission, the Historical Society. It'd be good to hear from them. Yeah, I haven't. Okay, so maybe. Well, we'll, so I sent it out to all of the boards and committees. So I haven't heard from conservation. I haven't heard from historical commission. Um, I guess the historical society would have gotten it indirectly from because there's overlap between the between those. Yep. Um, if you if you write this list up, I'm happy to look at it, and I, I I'll I want to reach out directly, especially to the conservation commission, but other folks too. Um, and is there a there's a recreation department, and we've heard, did we hear from them? Yeah, they um, asked just for the reimbursement of their lost <laughs> revenue. Yeah, <laughs> okay. they, they asked for it back in cash. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> um, and what about? Um, I think we missed the activity, the point of the activity. Yeah. There's um, there's the housing group that I know Montserrat and Hannah are both on. I just, I didn't know about it. Um, yeah, I'm on it too. This meeting meant that I didn't go to their meeting. Right. Yeah. And they're looking at affordable You're housing. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought it would be nice to reach out to them and see if there's, you know, anything they want. <laughs> no, well, that that's the kind of place where if, something like you know a habitat for humanity house or something came up that this money might be used to leverage right so, you know not actually spend it but need to have it there yep yeah exactly exactly it seems like because obviously that's there's a lot of money involved in housing but um i could imagine it could leverage other grants um <clears throat> who else um like what about cisa um it's you know it's um an important organization um and be and we, we talked about private entities can appeal to us whether we say yes or not we still would might want to hear like from like from the wait in the inn or um quan quan or um other private places <laughs> um yeah the problem with that is it, uh, i don't have any problem with it except that showing that it would benefit the whole town would be tough if you're right. benefiting. That's on them. Right. Right. That, that would be on them. And that's why I like the idea of to anyone we're reaching out to, here is the list of things we're looking for. If you have a proposal, this is what we, we want you to give us. I mean, I guess it is the RFP that Brian, you had initially asked for in the fall that was so daunting, but now it seems very reasonable. So um, uh, <clears throat> anyway, so it seems like to at least to just make sure that we've touched base with folks, whether they have anything that they can bring to us or not, at least we've reached out to them. And if we, if we just want to spend it, there's plenty of money that can be spent just <laughs> rehabbing center school too. Well, so Fred, you, I, I mean, I am such a huge fan of that, even though it's, you know, it is but, a- But money. until we have some idea of what it's going to be used for, it might be premature. Yeah, but mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I, I, it has gone through my mind as well, and Paul, probably you too, because you worked on it. Um, just that, it, in some ways, it, it seems like such a, a great opportunity. But yes, it is a, a money sinkhole. So it there is nothing, problem. you know. I, I agree. In, in, there are many areas that we can spend money on, and I think one of the first criteria that we all feel strongly about is that it help impact as many people in this town as possible. And there is nothing that we can do that would, if you can relieve the tax burden as we did this past year, that reaches more people in town than anything. And, and, and just, you know, 
I think we keep that in the back of my mind a little bit. Um, any other thoughts of groups at all? Good. All right, we're done. All right, we have a motion. I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Bye.